G'day everyone. Day 5, LED bar graph. This is a pretty simple, straightforward current management circuit using um, BJTs, bipolar junction transistors. I was playing around with, with current sources and current mirrors and various other current control related circuits using bipolar junction transistors tonight. I, I figured that's probably something that I want to cover in a, in a later um, advent calendar article. It's, uh, it's an interesting and, and quite simple skill once you learn a few tricks to actually be able to design with BJT, so I thought that would be a great thing to cover. In any case, what I was doing is I was coming up with a shunt regulator, and one way of ensuring you know, constant brightness with an LED is to have some kind of constant current source for it. Now you can use a, a FET, um, or you could use a, you know, a BJT to do that, and you could have some kind of series regulating circuit. I thought, mm, well, why not let's talk about shunt regulators, because shunt regulators are actually quite effective, they're just not particularly efficient. So here we have an LED, we have a, you know, a resistor in series with it. Normally you put this across a voltage source and you'd set that resistor such that the maximum current through the LED based on that voltage source, which you, you know, in that case would be constant, would be you know, just normal Ohm's law kind of stuff. In this particular case, this current source is essentially arbitrary and we can turn the current up and as the, um, the current increases, if you exceed you know, the limit of the LED, you're going to blow the thing up. The, in this case, we put a transistor across it such that as the current increases, the voltage dropped across this resistor increases to the point where it exceeds the VBE of this transistor. And this transistor turns on and starts to pull the excess current through and just shunts it to ground. Now, in doing that, it protects this um, and the LED from the additional current. It, the, so and once you exceed this limit where the VBE starts to turn on, the current through this LED will actually plateau off and become essentially constant as you increase the current fed into the circuit. Obviously there's limits to this, and if you just keep turning the current up, it'll just keep going through this transistor until you blow it up, because there's going to be about maybe two, two and a half volts across this transistor, and you know if it's a couple of amps, you're talking about many watts there and the thing's going to blow up. But in a practical circuit, you're probably dealing with a voltage source anyway, it's just going to be some variable voltage once it's above the threshold where the LED starts to actually turn on. And you'd have a series limiting resistor in here at a reasonable value, and most of your energy will be wasted in that resistor rather than in the, the transistor. In any case, you know, you're not going to be using it in crazy different ranges of, um, of voltage where you, know, you could actually cook the device. You'd have to scale everything appropriately. In any case, it's really to demonstrate the purpose of this circuit. Calculating this resistor value is, is relatively simple. Um, it's equal to the, the VBE divided by the current, the maximum current that you want through the LED. If you take, say, 0.65 for the VBE, the VBE is obviously process dependent, temperature dependent, a whole bunch of other stuff. But if you look up the VBE for a 2N3904 at about 1 milliamp, which is for a modern high brightness LED, a reasonable current, maybe you'd want 10 to 20 milliamps for an older tech LED. And you just do the math. In this case, I wanted a 1 milliamp because these LEDs that I'm going to show you in a minute are reasonably efficient. So we get about 680 ohms, which is the nearest E12 preferred value for that resistor. Okay, I built that circuit. Works pretty well. You can crank the voltage um, of the current up almost as much as you want until the resistor and uh, until the transistor starts to get quite hot. But I thought, why just spill this current? Why not pass it on to another transistor? So in this circuit, that's exactly what we've done. We've got some current coming in, goes through into the first diode. Once the threshold is reached, this transistor turns on and it spills the current into a NPN transistor this time that turns on another identical stage, essentially. And there's, you can cascade these stages. So as soon as this guy's current threshold is, is exceeded, this transistor turns on, turns on this transistor, and so on. In the very last stage, we do that trick where we just shunt the the um, excess current to ground. And they'll light up in sequence. So this LED will come on, then this LED, then this LED. There'll be some region of transition where this circuit is still starting to saturate and this one's just starting to turn on. But the result's very fluid and it works pretty well as a display. In order to generate the current source, I did, you just made a really simple emitter follower. Um, this is just a 2N3904, a pot to set the voltage for its base and a 1K resistor, which gives me, you know, basically 1 volt to 1 milliamp um, output current. So for a 9 volt supply, which I just use a 9 volt battery, 
you get about eight and a half milliamps out of it maximum. You can turn it right down to essentially zero when the transistor cuts off. Okay, so let's see the circuit in in the flash. So here we have the simple shunt regulator circuit. Just one transistor, two resistors. I used a 1K resistor for that current defining value and I've you hooked it up to the voltage supply here from the other board. In this corner is that voltage to current converter. It also uses a 1K resistor. So the voltage puts, you know, basically one volt equals one milliamp into both of these circuits. Okay, I've got a pot here and this is the voltage at the output of the this guy's emitter right here. Okay. So as you can see, until we exceed the the turn on voltage of the LEDs, not much happens. But once we get to about 1.5, 1.8 volts, those LEDs start to turn on. And when we reach about two and a half volts, they're running about a milliamp including the, the drop across that resistor. So as we turn it up a little bit more, the next stage will start to come on over here. In this particular case, you'll, you'll note as I continue to turn it up, the brightness of this LED doesn't change very much. Pretty much plateaued off now and won't, won't increase. So I turn it up, and those guys light up in sequence. Now once I get above the 5 or 6 milliamps that it's taking for you know, 1 milliamp here and 4 milliamps here, nothing changes. What's happening is this transistor here is just eating that extra current. So you can see, pretty simple. You can cascade this obviously, well I mean there's practical limits but you can basically keep going and make a you know a 50 stage one if you wanted to. The, uh, the current interval would then be 50 times the current for each LED. You can have each individual LED have different currents if you want. So You'd have to, you know, for example, you could have different color LEDs, and that way you could set the current so they all have similar brightness, or similar apparent brightness, which can be useful for various displays. It's a pretty cool circuit. You can also, say, control this voltage or the control the current into it using a, an analog signal, so your traditional old VU meter, you can implement this way. The circuit's pretty quick. Um, I didn't actually test it, but I imagine it would operate to hundreds of kilohertz without a problem. Alrighty, that was a quick and simple one for today. Easy to build. Um, these general kind of current control circuits with BJTs are, are super handy and are the basis of many of the projects that I'll do. So I think I, in the next couple of days I'll do some more um, designs along these lines because it, it's kind of fun and once you learn the, the rules of thumb it's pretty easy to design with BJTs. Alrighty, till next time. Leave uh, questions in the comments and I'll answer them. I'll link anything in the description that gets, you know, errata or um, any other details that I might put elsewhere. And until then, next time. Bye.